at that view. Today I'm in a place called Aberystwyth, which is on the west coast of Wales. The thing about traveling a lot is that you kind of, you must have to like remember where you've been so you can kind of catch up with yourself. On the weekend, Monday and Tuesday, I was in Dublin. Tuesday night, Wednesday and Thursday, I was in Snowdonia. Last night I came here to Aberystwyth. Yeah, and now here I am on Friday. I actually slept like up there somewhere. I don't know exactly where. But basically this morning had this amazing view. Very, very tempted to jump in the sea right now, but I have none of my stuff with me. Oh man, I really want to go in the sea. So I'm uh, just heading back to my car now, and I think I haven't quite decided where I'm going to go next, but I'm going to head across into kind of mid Wales. Hopefully find somewhere really beautiful to sleep for the night. You never can tell how steep it is, but parked right at the top of this steep hill. Oh man, do you know what? I'd love to go for a swim. Oh, shall I? If I go for a swim, it's just going to get too late and I'm going to get really hungry before I cook my dinner. Because I'm probably going to drive for about an hour to where I'm going to sleep tonight. And then obviously the old classic routine of building my fire, cooking my dinner. Oh, though I've got a very simple dinner tonight. It's just soup and bread, which is already made. I just need to heat it up. Oh man, this is a steep hill. Can't believe it. So, so I, I bought the soup I was going to have for dinner tonight yesterday the problem with leaving it in my car is that even if it's a cold day if it's sunny obviously the car warms up and it's just not that good so i stored it just here underneath my car and it's not there someone stole my soup who would steal soup what okay <laughs> this is my soup this is my this is my soup Someone stole my soup and then littered the remains of my soup onto the floor. Ah, to be fair, it could have been a... Could it have been an animal? Just smelt that delicious soup. I was really looking forward to that. I'm gonna have to do something else for dinner. Maybe I'll go buy some more soup. So uh, I was just putting my bike away in my car and I noticed... Little bits of soup. A little bit of plastic. Then I noticed more plastic. Then I noticed a lid. Then I noticed like half a thing there. I think, I genuinely think a fox or a badger, probably a fox, stole my soup and somehow managed to get into it and completely like cleaned up. And now there's just like bits of plastic everywhere. So, I guess this is technically my litter. Ah, oh, cheeky, cheeky badger. So, I'm gonna take that rubbish with me. My soup. So I came back into town to get my replacement soup and just found myself here back on the promenade. In my whole entire life, I have never regretted going in the sea, never. And I've been in the sea when there have been like icicles forming on the rocks, you know, and it's super, super like, super cold and never once have I regretted it. And so this phrase, I've never regretted going in the sea, is like this phrase that's become really important to me. And obviously it means way more than just when I'm next to the sea, I better go in the sea. It means whenever I'm sort of indecisive about whether or not to do something that secretly deep down I know is just gonna be like loads of fun or it's gonna be really good. I always just kind of tell myself, you know, I've never regretted going in the sea. So, uh, sun setting, water looks good, I'm going in. Oh man, that was good, that was good, I really enjoyed that. Now it's, so it's about 20 past seven now. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give up on the idea of soup. What I'll probably do is stop off on the way and, and just have some, you know, just buy some dinner. Bit of a shame not to be able to light a fire, but I think by realistically, by the time I get to the forest, it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be already quite late. Man, I feel really glad I did that. If it wasn't for that fox eating my soup, I probably wouldn't have come down here. So thank you, fox, for eating my soup. 
so just on my way to mid Wales now. Hopefully, I'm going to camp in a place called the Elan Valley, and it's a place I've been to quite a few times before, so it's quite nice to go somewhere familiar. This is the Elan Valley. You probably can't see in the camera, but the stars are out, and I can just see the silhouette of all these beautiful looking hills and mountains. Oh, this place is absolutely amazing. I know I've probably said that about a million times in the last few vlogs, but listen to how quiet it is. It's so quiet. So amazingly quiet. The stars are just absolutely incredible. I've taken a few long exposures, so hopefully they'll come out all right. It's funny as well, I was feeling like, earlier today, I was feeling a bit like bogged down with the amount of work I have to do and I don't know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on as well and so I was feeling a bit down actually to be honest. But it's just amazing how being in a place like this just completely like shifts everything into perspective, you know. I feel just like actually in awe that we so rarely feel like that. You know, we say awesome all the time and we say all these words but like being here right now it's like just goodness, you know? It's just like pure goodness. It's like cleansing. There's like an actual healing kind of, I don't know, I can't describe what it is. You know, I'm not even in the wood yet. I'm just, <laughs> I'm like literally just standing on the road right now and I just feel just really overwhelmed with just wonder. A sense of wonder, that's what it is, I think. Wonder, gratitude, awe an amazing sense of perspective all of a sudden. And I feel tiny, obviously, because I'm just tiny little me, dwarfed by these massive trees, dwarfed by the stars that are millions and millions of light years away. And yet, I feel connected. And yet I feel a real deep sense of belonging. Ah, it's just amazing. I think, to be honest, it's, it's just been a really long week. And I'm feeling a bit emosh, but also just feeling really glad all at the same time. So uh, it's actually quite early and I've actually been up for quite a long time. I woke up really naturally this morning. At, it was something like quarter to seven, like 6.45. I don't really know why, because I thought I was really tired, but you know, woke up and just felt great. And because it's the weekend, I don't have to, there's absolutely no rush to get up and go and do things, you know. I spend an awful lot of time in forests, but it's not actually that often that I get to really just take my time and enjoy being here. I'll probably go for a cheeky swim at some point down in the reservoir. But yeah, it's just such a great setup. The best thing about being right here is just this amazing view. Don't know if you can see. Beautiful forest, beautiful reservoir, beautiful hills in the background. This is the sort of place that I look for when I'm hammock camping. This is like the ideal spot, really. Most of the trees here are Douglas fir. So like this one and this one that I'm attached to. Just such a beautiful tree. Uh, one thing I love about it is the sap. Let me see if I can find some. The sap is sweet smelling. It's just like this really sweet. It just smells so good. I can't really describe it. You have to smell it for yourself, but it smells so good that you could, it smells like you could eat it, you know? It smells just really, really good. And then also the bark, I think, looks really distinctive. It's really like complex and like textured. But yeah, I just love the sweet smell. And I love the sort of textured bark and the cones are really distinctive. Oh, it's just a great tree. For me now, if I'm in like a spruce wood, it's got a very specific atmosphere and I'm like, oh, it's that spruce wood atmosphere. And if I'm in like a, an oak wood, it's like, oh, this is like the oak wood atmosphere. And if there's Douglas fir or like Western red cedars or like all these trees give a forest very distinctive character and very distinctive atmosphere. And I love just being familiar with all those different atmospheres. So coming out to the forest is always a different experience depending on which trees are there because they create a different mood. All oh, right, look at this. This is my own little private beach. Oh, it does feel a bit chilly. Don't know how I'm gonna film this, but I think I'm gonna just jump in without any clothes on. <laughs> yeah, you know, there aren't any people around or anything, so I think I could have a quick dip.
back at my hammock now. I think I'm probably just gonna pack this down before, uh, ooh, look at this, blackberries. It's not a bad breakfast. Breakfast, so I've decided not to light a fire. My plan was to wake up and, you know, make a fire and have porridge, but actually I don't feel I don't know, it probably would be fine, but because I'm quite close to a road and because it's a Saturday and know a lot of people come here walking, I just don't want to alarm anyone. So for my breakfast this morning, I'm just gonna have uh, have this and just realize that I'm surrounded by blackberries. It's my nice little collection of blackberries. All right, let's go. That was a really good spot. So I'm changed, got clean and fresh, and uh, yeah, ready to go and enjoy my day. What a beautiful place. Pretty great. All right, so I'm in a town called Clandrin Nodwells. And actually this is a really familiar place to me because my friend John lives here. And he has no idea that I'm here right now. And so I'm gonna go and knock on his door and see if he answers. Oh, I really hope he's there. No. Doesn't look like he's there. All right, so I just texted John. Turns out he's working, so I might try and go and surprise him at work. Now that I've got my mind set on seeing John, I'm like, I must see him. I feel like I was discreet enough in my text so that he doesn't know I'm coming, but we'll see. Okay, this is where John works. No, I was gonna surprise you. How's it going? What are you doing? Uh, I wanted to film your reaction. Why? <laughs> because I knew it would be amazing. John, really quickly. Yeah? What do you think about my outdoor lifestyle? Absolutely, 100% ridiculous. 